Brownswick Bowling presents another junior bowling video. From Brunswick Zone Roswell in Roswell, Georgia, it's the Prodigy Bowlers Tour, our YouTube webcast series of unofficial, informal, and impromptu after-league challenge matches to decide weekly bragging rights among our bowling center's most dedicated junior bowlers. This week, five kids stayed after league to compete in a survivor-style series of games. At the end of the first game, the low bowler will be eliminated. Then, the four survivors will compete in a second match, where the two low bowlers will be eliminated, leaving the final two players to compete in the third and final head-to-head -head match for all the marbles. Well, there are no marbles, but you know what I mean. They're bowling this week on the Kegel Landmark Challenge Series pattern known as Statue of Liberty. The middle part of the lane is flooded, but the overall volume is slightly below average at 24.73 milliliters, and the ratio is about 3 to 1. The oil is run to about 35 feet and buffed to 47. Most players will want to play inside on this pattern, as the rule of 31 would dictate that they'd want their ball to be on the 16 board as it exits the pattern at the 47-foot mark. We pick up the action in our first elimination match as the ninth frame is getting underway. And we check out Logan on the right lane, starting his ninth frame. 132 through seven with a spare working in the eighth. He sends this one all the way to the edge of the lane and brings it back for a strike. Now remember, just the low man in this game will fail to qualify for the semifinal match. And we get our first look at Daniel. The only left-hander in our field today. He had a double working and now he has 102 through seven. And here's Brandon on lane 25. That one doesn't quite get up, leaving a two pin. And here's Daniel going yeah. for the seven. And just lets that one slide by into the moat. So uh, it's looking like Daniel might be the odd man out after this game, but we'll see. Here's Brandon for the two. Look out. Okay. That one hung on. Saved by the oil in the middle of the lane. Here's Christian on the right. And he pulled that one, but got away with it, tripping the six on a Brooklyn hit. So that gives Christian a double. And now here's Charlie. Oh! He not only trips the four, he tripped out the four and the nine. But it's all good now. All right, Brandon up on the right lane in the 10th. Right in the pocket for a solid strike. And Logan's ball hooks high, leaving the three, six, nine, ten. One of the most difficult spares there is that isn't a split. And Brandon doubles in the 10th. And Logan uh, leaves the nine pin on his spare attempt. So he finishes with a 180 but it will be enough to go on to the next match. The last time we had Brandon on one of our webcasts, he was Mr. 10th frame. He was striking just about every ball in the 10th frame, every game. This one comes up high, leaving the 4-7. But Brandon finishes with a 2.09 as we just saw Daniel go through the nose. 
and leave a seven pin. Here's Charlie on the right lane. And this one hooks high and leaves the 610. Daniel falling off balance a little bit. He had a chance, but uh, finishing with a couple of open frames is going to deny him the chance to continue with this group into the semifinal match. But uh, Daniel is new to our junior leagues and uh, still has a a little ways to go to catch some of these guys average wise, but he's got a lot of potential. And here's Charlie and his spare attempt at the 610 sails wide. And he finishes with an open, but again, it really doesn't matter. The object in this game is to simply not finish last and be eliminated. And Christian pulls that one left of target. One of the things we work on with Christian is uh, his timing and uh, and trying to get him to just let gravity drop the ball from the top. He has a tendency sometimes to pull it down real hard. And that's what will happen. The ball will go left. Actually, that shot that he just threw would have been uh, pretty good for a strike. But uh, looks like uh, we're going to lose Daniel at the end of this game. Brandon 209, Charlie 182, Logan 180, Christian 168, and Daniel with a 139. And we have to say goodbye to Daniel. Say goodbye to Daniel. We'll be back with the second match right after this. And in the afternoon, when things slow down, when you're wondering what to do. Let's go. Go bowling. Nothing brings people together or makes friends so fast as bowling. So call a friend. Bowl Brunswick tomorrow. All right. Back for match number two. Our semifinal. We're down to four players now. And this time, two will be eliminated at the end of this game. Logan starts off. And that one comes up high and leaves a six pin. Here's Brandon starting things out on the right lane. E2 through the nose, 610. As Logan makes short work of the six pin on the left lane. And uh, Brandon will have uh, the 610, a similar spare, a little more chop possibility, obviously. Here's Charlie on the left lane. We've uh, color coded the score sheets for you so that uh, you can tell who's who by the sh their shirt color matches the score sheet color for their name. Logan wearing his Denver Broncos shirt, so we gave him orange. There's a nice strike for Christian to start things out this semifinal match. Charlie had uh, gotten up inadvertently on the left lane a moment ago. He wasn't up on the left lane, but he's up now on the right. Uh-oh. Well, that's not the way you want to start the match. The six, seven, nine. A makeable split, but pretty difficult. Brandon on the left lane. And he gets it to finish just enough to carry a strike. 
first frame of this game. Charlie leaves a big split. Let's see what he can do with it. Oh! How about that one? Great shot. Yeah, I'd say that's definitely worth a fist bump, at the very least. Well, Charlie's just uh, feeling pretty pumped. I think he's ready to just go ahead and go again here. There's a better shot. Right in the hole. Well, he turned around what could have been a disaster into a pretty solid start now. Spare strike. I like it. And Logan up in the second frame on the right lane. Comes up high, leaving the 3 6 10. That one just didn't push like we saw some of the others that he's thrown. It came up into the pocket. Goes with his spare ball at it and converts it. Good ball. All right, and that brings up Christian on the right lane. Christian's been fighting his way through a bit of a slump here lately. Look out, that one may be wide, and it is. It doesn't come up, leaving the one, two, four. Here's Logan. And that one snaps hard on the back. Leaves the three pin. Look out, that one's gone. Yes, well, he's not pleased. And Logan has no problem with the single pin spare. Again, the two low bowlers in this game will be eliminated. Here's Brandon up on the right, working on a strike. But this one does not get up, and he leaves the washout. Christian's ball. A little more speed that time, I think, is what uh, kept that ball from getting up. Play the washout from the left side of the lane, and it just gets too much of the head pin, and he gets eight out. It's Christian's attempt at the 2 4 5. Nicely covered. Let's see if Charlie can put a double up on the board. Oh, he threw a good one. The 10 pin refuses to go. So it be, looks like Charlie's going to go ahead and. Nope, Brandon's going to go. Okay. Little high, 610, playing a very tight line on that lane. Charlie for the six pin. Well, if he can make the 679 on that lane, he should be able to handle the six pin without a problem. And he does. Logan in the fourth frame on the right lane. And 
that one gets way out to the edge again and comes roaring back for a shaker strike. I love those kinds of strikes. Here's Brandon. Covers the 6-10. No problem. And Christian up in the fourth. Gets through that one pretty good, but he just hit it a little too hard. A little too much grab. The three, six, nine, ten. Here's Charlie. Ooh, that was just a touch high. Leaves the four pin. So Christian now. Very difficult spare. Oh, he pulled it. Look out. Oh, he gets it anyway. Thank goodness for the sideboards. All right, Charlie for the four. Bank it. Easy peasy. Brandon, who shot his career high series just the night before, a 699. Goes through the nose, leaves a six pin. Here's Logan on the left. And he gets that one out wide enough, too, and it shreds the rack. So we have our first double of the game. Brandon covers the six. No problem. Here's Christian on the left. And that one finds the swish zone. And he carries a strike. So Christian trying to come back here in the latter half of the game. And that was as solid as they come. Brandon once again. And he gets that one to finish nicely and go through the pins just the way you want it to. There's a strike. Here's Logan. And suddenly Logan has found it. There is a turkey. Charlie. So smooth you don't even hear the ball touch the lane when he sets it down. That one comes up just a little high. And another four pin just can't seem to get a double. Christian, another good one right in the pocket. And now Christian trying to claw back in it. Remember, you don't have to win this game. You just have to avoid finishing in the bottom half. And an anxious moment there for Charlie. Afraid that was going to sail by on the right, but he covers the four. So Logan working on a turkey. See if he can extend it to a four bagger. Yes, he can. Brandon trying to stay with him. There's another strike for Brandon. So, 
suddenly these lanes have heated up. Christian needs to keep with him. Oh, man. We needed that one. Solid 10. Oh, my goodness, the fast eight, where the two flies up and around the four seven. Goodness gracious. Charlie just can't catch a break this game. Uh oh. And Christian looks like that one kind of hung on his thumb a little bit. Maybe he's just grabbing it too much. But in any case, that is an open for Christian, and that's going to put him in a tough spot. There's a spare for Charlie. He's got a little digging to do here. Looks like uh, Brandon's on a roll. If he can get another strike here, he may run away and hide. Look at here. Well, Brandon is hanging right with Logan this game. Uh-oh, uh-oh. The three, four, six, seven. And Charlie gets the love tap on the 10. Let's see what Logan can do with this split. Ooh, oh, oh, oh man. That three pin actually touched the four, it wiggled it. And, but it didn't knock it over, and so he is open in the eighth. Certainly gives Charlie an opening. Christian comes up light, leaving the two pin. Here's Logan on the left lane. He comes right back after that open frame. And Christian, I think, is just, uh, he's mentally done this game. <laughs> it's, it's interesting to watch these kids sometimes. Some of them have so much game, and yet, if anything goes wrong, the, what will happen with them is they just kind of mentally check out. They're just not. Well, they're not mature yet. They're still kids, you know? They're great kids, but I think the mental game comes as you get a little older. And Brandon with another strike. So he is uh, leaving everybody behind. Christian on the left lane. No, what happened? Maybe something slipped, or I don't know. Maybe something happened with his feet, I don't know. Uh-oh, Charlie through the nose. This is trouble. Christian leaving the 4-7. He just needs uh, something good to happen just to get some confidence going. Charlie will throw hard at the 4-6-7, but can't get anything to bounce out, so that's an open frame. Christian for the 4-7. And when is he going to learn? You throw straight at spares. He hooks that one into the ditch. That's three opens in a row. He will learn, though. Logan with another strike. He's bowled a solid game. The only bad shot he threw, really, was the, the first ball in the eight, where he left that split, and he almost made it. And Brandon rips the rack and puts up a five-bagger. I think every game we've had Brandon on these webcasts, 
He has struck at least once, or I think maybe even twice in the 10th. Do it again? Not quite. A week 10 that time, that'll put him in the 220s. Here's Logan for his spare, and he will finish with a 219. Nice game. Now we know who our finalists are going to be. And we're going to have a new face in the championship match this time. And Brandon just lets that one slide off into the moat, but a 223 is enough to take this game. As Christian puts one right in the hole, but he stones the seven pin. So nothing really going his way. Here's Charlie in the 10th. They're just going through the motions now, finishing the game off. 10 pin for Charlie. Here's Christian for his spare. Converts the seven, so he stops the string of opens at least. But this is not the way he had hoped this game would go. And he will finish with a Brooklyn strike for a 154. And Charlie will convert his 10 pin. And we'll have one more ball to throw. That is a 185 for Charlie. And we will be back in a moment and we will talk to the vanquished players from this match. These days, popular teenagers all over the country are finding fun and good companionship in America's most wholesome game. It's the new rock and roll. Roll means bowl. All the fellas and gals are out bowling. Rock and rolling means bowling. Bowling means Brunswick. Every guy and gal should know the name. Brunswick. So join the kids and start in bowling. It's the newest rock and rolling. America swinging this teenage game. And Brunswick is the name that makes the game. America swinging this teenage game. And Brunswick is the name that makes the game. So what happened? Um, I guess after a little bit of my, I don't know, my shots, I started speeding up the ball, started pulling down on my shots, and this wasn't working out for me, so, yeah. Better luck next time. Charlie? Top of your, your thing. You've been, you've been in the final match with Logan, like, three or four times now. Yeah. And I think our viewers are wanting to know uh, a little about you. I mean, how long have you been bowling? Um, nine years now, eight or nine. nine. And how old are you now? 14. Okay, what, what weight ball do you throw? I throw 14 right now. Yeah, and uh, you're carrying a league average of what? 198 right now. Uh-huh. So. And what happened today? You just didn't uh, have it? No, I don't know. I was hitting pocket, but I didn't make my adjustments fast enough. So when I finally did, it was 10th, 9th, 10th frame. So it was too late to come back because they already shot 220s. So I was pretty much done then. So I mean, they shot good games. Nothing you can do about it. So. Well, we know you'll be back again. Yeah. So we haven't seen you on our uh, webcast before. You you made the uh, you made the uh, final group in the uh, Bolapalooza competition. Yep. What's uh, what's your deal, Leo? Um, I just need to focus and stay calm and do what I've been doing. Are you nervous? A little. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's just like practice. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But it kind of does because you want to win. 
Yep. Okay, you're bowling a pretty good, pretty good little bowl. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you. And what about you? Uh, our viewers have been asking about you. How old are you? Um, Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. What? 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 Well, you've been throwing twelve pounds, but. You uh, just went to a heavier weight ball like this week, right? Yeah, yesterday. So uh, what are you throwing now? 14. What What are you throwing today? Um, I started off throwing... A what? Game Breaker 2 Phenom. Game Breaker 2. I had to move down to a Columbia 300 Impulse because you know, I used to jump in way too early. And I brought this out because I thought I might use it, but I'm not. But you're not really using that one. Okay, well, what do you think it's going to take to beat Brandon? He's been he's been hot lately. I uh, just got to let him know that I'm not going to leave him open frames. Okay, well, good luck. Thank you. Not leaving open frames in this championship match might be a really good idea. We've got a fresh face in Brandon. He is taking on Logan. This is Brandon's first time in a championship match in our little webcast series. And Logan is an old pro at it, so this will be interesting. And Brandon's first ball in this match fails to get up to the pocket, and he leaves the one, two, four. Maybe a little tentative, could be a little bit of nerves. We'll see. He's been pretty solid on his spares. Just got to get this one over to the Brooklyn side. Got to get up. And he chops it. That is not the start he wanted. That's not what's going to build confidence when you're in an unfamiliar environment like this. Logan's licking his chops now. Oh, but he gets. That ball hooking a little bit soon. He didn't get it to push quite enough. And he leaves that same split he nearly made earlier. The, the three, four, six, seven. Got to get that ball over to the right of the three pin, knock it over into the four and seven. But he gets too much of the three and opens in the first. So Brandon actually uh, will lead after the first frame by a stick. And the first ball in the second frame comes up a little high as well, leaving a, another difficult spare, the three, six, ten. Logan goes to a plastic ball. He throws a T-zone at most of his spares. I think that's the right play for this. And he converts a difficult spare. So maybe Brandon can settle down here and uh, make the kind of shot that he's been making a whole lot lately. Looks pretty good. Right in the pocket leaves a solid 10. That was a pretty nice relaxed shot by Brandon. Now, I got to say he has had some some difficulty with the 10 pin in the past, so this will be a good test for him. We'll find out just how his nerves are here with this one. He moves to the extreme left side of the lane, going cross lane. Drifts a little bit to the right. Look out! Oh, it just slides off. And now you got to wonder what's going through his mind. I mean, I've been in matches before where you open early, you open a couple of times, and now you're just thinking, 
I just gotta have something good happen. Just a spare anything. Just settle you down. Makes a nice pass at this one. Well, that's about as good as you can do. All right. Maybe now that he's had uh, a good shot come off his hand. A couple of good shots, really. That last ball, one on the right lane, could have struck. All right. Logan on the right lane. It's a plenty wide this time and goes right through the pins the way you want it. And that's as solid a ball as you'll ever see. takes a 10 pin lead as he moves over to the left lane here oh my goodness well that was a different kind of 10 pin than I think I've ever seen that almost looked like a mirror image of a stone seven. The six didn't really wrap around the 10 like you typically see on a solid 10. That was different. All right, there's a spare for Logan. But now that gives Brandon an opportunity. If he can put a strike up here, he can even this match. What I like so much about match play is you can turn them around in a big hurry if you can just string a few strikes. Get up. Nope. Just didn't come off his hand the way he wanted it to. Now he's got a difficult spare. The 1 2 10 washout. Gotta have it. Keep him within 10. But no. And open. So now the lead is 22 for Logan. That's how important spares are. Well, the last time he was up on this left lane, he threw a, a good solid strike. Let's see if he can do it again here. If you've got one good lane, you want to try to hang on to it. And he did just that. Okay. Can't get discouraged. There's still a little over half a game left. A lot can happen. One of the things that can happen is Logan can suddenly get hot too. We've certainly seen him do that a few times. All right, we're halfway through the game. Issue. All right, we are having a stoppage here for just a moment as the automatic scoring system in the bowling center only credited Brandon with nine pins, so the arrows were pointing in the wrong direction. So we get that fixed and resume the match. to extend the lead to 32. Ooh. Nearly left a light 410, but the 10 went down, and he is presented with a fairly simple single pin spare, the four pin. Oh. 
And he covers it easily. So the lead remains 22. And now Brandon can cut it to 12 with a strike here. Actually, he can cut it all the way down to two pins if he can strike on both balls this turn. Goes high, and goodness gracious, just right, the, the, go. the one thing he couldn't afford to have happen. The six, seven, ten. I mean, he's got to go for it. I mean, now is not the time to go for count. Now's the time you got to go for it. Also going with a spare ball. And he will get too much six pin. And that is another open frame. So now he is down 34 pins. And he is going to need some help from Logan to get back in this match. Come on, little B. Make a matchup. You've got this lane. Come on. Four opens in the first six frames. I would never have guessed he would do that. The way he's been bowling lately. Just, it's got to be nerves. It's just got to be nerves. Through the nose, and he even looked away before the ball even hit the pins. I think he was resigned to the idea that that was going to be a split, but he actually broke up the split. You can't look away. I have an old saying, never turn your back on him until old iron claws gets him. You just never know what's going to happen. Looks like he's got his dauber down a little bit and uh, you just don't know what your opponent is going to do. You just got to stay in it mentally. You just never know what's going to happen. Converts the 6-10 spare. But now Logan I mean, the, the mindset Logan's got to have right now is, you know, now's the time to put the hammer down and bury him. But no, no, the ball goes high. And although there's probably not an easier split than the baby split, it is a split nonetheless. Now is not the time to start making opens. But that's just what he does. And so now the lead is back down to 21. All right. It's still a 21 pin lead, Logan. Just make a good pass at this one. right back in control. Well, he made a good pass at it. Left a simple spare. Well, that's got to get up. Well, that's a gift. That is a gift. So, all of a sudden, Brandon has new life. He can tie up this match if he strikes twice this turn. Wow. I certainly wouldn't have predicted that, but we've seen some surprising things today. All right, Brandon's just got to bear down drive this one right into the pocket. But it goes high. He leaves the 610. But now don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. You convert this one right here. And the lead is down to 12. With two frames to go. You just don't know what's going to happen. Obviously this game marks are at a premium. So 
just bear down, stay with it, convert the spare. All right, he's got it. And the lead is now 12. So you just got to stay on it. I have a feeling that this game is still going to go down to the 10th frame. Brandon can't make any more mistakes. He made another good pass at it, but that one just doesn't quite finish, and he leaves a flat 10. It's all right, though. Cover it up. You just don't know what's going to happen. You would never have predicted that Logan would get up and make two opens in his last turn. So, cover up this 10 pin. He's had trouble with them on occasion. But he gets this one. And I'm sure he's breathing a sigh of relief right now. All right. Well, the chances may seem remote, but it's just a 13-pin lead. Uh-oh. Oh, my goodness. Well, that could have been a 4-7-9. It was almost a 7-9. A but Logan gets everything to go but the 9, so... I hesitate to say it's a simple spare. He just missed a simple spare in the four pin, the last frame. So I think nothing can be taken for granted. But he gets that one. So Logan will take a 13 pin lead into the 10th frame. Both players working on a spare. Projecting. Brandon, if he strikes out, can shoot 161. So Logan needs to fill 18. Uh-oh. Wow. Wow. Okay. That could be a decisive break right there. Gotta make it. And he does. So with that, let's see here, let's figure this out. He needs nine on this ball to shut out Brandon. If he gets eight, Brandon can get up and throw three strikes in the 10th for a tie. Nine's a winner. Brooklyn! And he gets nine and wins it. It sure wasn't pretty, but it's enough. Brandon's first ball in the 10th comes up a little light, leaving the 2-4-5. This will be a learning experience for Brandon. He just got off to a really slow start. He just dug himself too deep a hole. That's all there is to it. He made shots that are just pretty uncharacteristic for him. He covers the spare. He'll finish in the 140s. This is not the scoring that we expected after seeing both of them shoot in the 200s the last game. But the funny thing about match play is it doesn't matter how high the score is that you get. It just matters that you score one pin more than the other guy. And he trips out the four pin to finish with a strike and Logan 
takes the championship 162 to 148. We'll be back to talk to both of them. The perfect Christmas gift for the bowler on your list is inside this envelope. It's a Brunswick Bowler's gift certificate. And with it, a bowler can get a high-scoring Brunswick ball, bag, and bowling shoes. So why not stop in at your favorite bowling lane, sports, jewelry, or department store and pick up a Brunswick Bowler's gift certificate? Yes, this Christmas, why not give all three the easy Brunswick gift certificate way? And that's the way to take care of your Christmas shopping. Our final standings, Logan takes first place, Brandon second, Charlie third, Christian fourth, and Daniel fifth. So, Logan, that was not the tidiest game I've ever seen you bowl. If you ever, like, if you're ever watching this, like, wondering how to play the oil pattern, don't do what I did, because it was really bad. But At you, least hit your mark. But you somehow managed to win. You got what you needed at the end. That was a huge break when that two pin went down in the tenth frame. Because if that stays up and you open, I was like, then then uh, Brandon's got a chance, and he's been like Mr. Tenth Frame here lately. That's what I was afraid of. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Way to go, and you win. Here's your prize. You win nothing, Let's go. but bragging rights. People and you, me. what yeah. happened? What in the world happened? I think it was all in my head, and I just didn't stay focused, and I got I got distracted by what he was doing and not what I was doing. There you go. There's a, probably a lesson there, huh? Yep. All right. Well, better luck next time. Yep.